Hey, it's Matt here, and today I want to share with you a message uh, that came from a question that I got from a reader named Debbie, and it's it's what to do when you feel like you don't have anything to offer. You know, you don't feel like you you have a product in you. Uh, you want to do this online business thing, but you're really just not sure about it. You know, you don't have the confidence or or the uh, the wherewithal to really know like what do I have to offer the world? And and Debbie wrote to me. Uh, she said, "I'm going to read. It's a long thing here, but I'm going to read with you know read to you here." So my life trajectory included getting married at the age of 18 and having kids at 20 and 22, and going back to college for business. However, I couldn't get jobs, and when I did, I felt stuck because I wanted to be with my kids. So I went from job to job, and finally, when my kids were in high school, I got this job as a postal carrier. I, I've loved this job because there's so much freedom in it, but there's a limit to how much I can make. She goes on to say that, you know, I just started a website. I don't really have a business, no matter how much I think about it, or I just don't have any ideas for what to do. The things I'm passionate about, I have no idea how to monetize. I talked to someone else who thought I'd be a good administrative assistant, but still I don't think it fits the idea of having no limits to the income, at least for me. And she went on to basically say that, like, I don't know what I have to offer the world. So what would I even promote? What would I even write about? What would I even talk about? And and I wrote back to her and I, and I said, you know, if I may be so bold, you do have something to say and something to sell. And that's what I would say to you, to everyone watching this, you do have something to say. I, I mean, here's the thing. I read Debbie's story and I was like, oh my gosh, she has a freaking story. She has a story like married at 18, kids, went back to, I mean, like I'm starting to piece this together. She's got a story. You know, this is what Ted McGrath talks about, like message to millions is, is uh, you know, look it up, message to millions. It's, it's about how to, uh, to, to basically craft your life story. And I'm like, Debbie, you have a story. That's a superpower. That's a superpower. Having a powerful story is a superpower. You know, when I think of what is a superpower, I think it's a power that lies within somebody. You know, we think about the movies where somebody comes out with the superpower. It's this superpower. It's this power inside of somebody. It, usually it's unidentified. It's lying dormant. It can be used to save lives. It can be used to bring hope to others. It can be used to change the world. That's what a superpower is. And if you have a story that can save lives, if you have a story that can bring hope to others, if you have a story that can change the world, then you have a superpower. Like you don't need a cape. You don't need it's like to get bitten by some bionic spider or hit with crypt. What is it? What's the opposite of kryptonite? Whatever. You know, you don't have to come from some weird planet or you know get hit by radiation. You have a superpower if you have a story, and most of us have a story. Most of us have a really good story that people can relate to. Sometimes it's an average story, but people can relate to it. So I had, you know, for me personally, I had this superpower. And I didn't know it until my friend Jeff Goins pointed it out to me. And a couple months ago, I, or a couple, actually, gosh, it's been almost two years now. I, yeah, it's been almost two years. I talked to Jeff for his book, The Art of Work. And I, I told him my story and just shared my story with him. And I think it was chapter five in the book and ended up being my story. And I want to read you what he wrote back. It's a little bit long passage, kind of like Debbie's email, but I want to write back or share with you what he wrote back to me. When I emailed them and said, hey, thanks, I enjoyed talking. They said, you know, in reviewing the first email you sent me and then re-listening to the audio from our interview yesterday, something struck me. He said, your original email talked about a lot about how you started making a living and a good living and doing what you love. Money, it seemed, was an important part of that equation. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it, a lot of good can be done with money, but that didn't seem like that great of a story. Admittedly, like, hey, here's me. Look how successful I am. Want to be like me? Like, that's not that great of a story, right? And that's what I was kind of telling Jeff because I wanted to impress him. He said, still, I was curious to talk to you more. Then when you told me you were fired four different times and each time you failed your way a little more to your calling, I thought, now that's the story. Anyway, just one dude's opinion. But if you aren't focusing on that when you tell your story, you might try it. There's a lot of power to it especially given the amount of failure and rejection you faced and how God was using all that stuff to get you where you are now. Yes, it's cool that you're making a good living, really cool. And it's even cooler that you have a heart to be generous. But what will really give people hope, and again, pardon me for being so bold to say, sharing this, he says, is that there is humanity in the story, in your story, that you failed and still somehow 
uh, succeeded. That's the kind of hope people need. That's the kind of hope I need. That's what Jeff wrote to me. And I remember after reading that, I, I you know, everything changed for me. My story changed. Like my, my actual story didn't change. What I, none of my life experiences suddenly changed. And oh, wow, suddenly I'm, you know, the product of uh, my dad leaving when I was uh, barely two years old. You know, like with no word, and I'm just wondering where dad was. And suddenly I'm, you know, the fact that I grew up with a single mom, and I, I talk about how you know, she worked three jobs to keep us on the right side of the tracks, but I could see the tracks from my bedroom window. That didn't change. Suddenly the fact that I'd been fired four times, twice by the same company, and once by my own dad, that didn't change. Suddenly the fact that I literally stood in front of a judge once who could have put me in prison for 42 years if he had wanted to, and somehow came out of that, somehow you know, the, the story about starting a business, building it to $18 million a year with 52 employees and completely dropping dead after that and having no business. We sold for debt. We had no employees. That didn't change. None of my story changed. How I told it changed because I didn't focus on the fact that look at me, I'm on the mountaintop. Not that I was, but look at me, I'm close to the mountaintop. I focused on all the times I was in the valley. And people went, I can relate to that. I've been fired. I've been in trouble. I've made stupid mistakes. I've had businesses fail. And you know what? There's hope. This is my fourth business. The first three failed. They failed. I ended up broke from them. I didn't have any money at the end of those businesses. But here I am. And this one's not going to fail. You know, there's a reason why, getting off the track here, but the reason why that so many VCs, you know, venture capitalists, they don't want a CEO that hasn't had at least one failed business. You think, well, don't they want successful people? Maybe. But more so, they want people who've learned what it's like to fail and make those mistakes, and they've learned from them. So that's what Jeff told me. Jeff basically showed me I have a superpower. I have this, you know, this amazing power. And there's a reason why I didn't share that. And this is why I told Debbie. It's, it's insecurity. You know, we feel like, well, well, who am I? You know, who am I to... Uh, to really, I don't have that special of a story. Like my upbringing, my circumstances are no different than most people's, and I, I'm kind of insecure to share those. So for me, I didn't share them with Jeff because I didn't think they were all that special. And quite frankly, I wanted to focus on how amazing I was. You know, it was being fired by my father that helped me start my first consulting company. It was that consulting company failing because of uh, some stupid stuff I did. I write about it on my blog. It's not just look up uh, prison and look up handcuffs on my blog. Certainly I haven't written that many posts with the word handcuffs in them. And I'm open about why I faced 42 years in prison. I'm not, this is not the point of this video here. But if you're curious, go look it up. I'm not trying to hide anything there. And I, I'm, I'm literally standing in front of this judge and he could put me in prison for 42 years. And that's why my third business, or my, uh, sorry, my second business failed. And then suddenly I, that forced me into my third one. In my third business, the fact that we got it we got it so close to the mountaintop. We had an offer once to sell for $57 million to our biggest competitor. We turned them down because we knew that wasn't even close to what we were going to make. And yet we failed. Ended up with zero. I have nothing to show for that business other than a lot of lessons and what not to do's. And I'm thankful for that. But I didn't want to focus on those. I didn't want to focus on those. I didn't want to focus on the fact that the reason I'm good at marketing, that I learned marketing, is because my dad fired me, and I didn't have a choice. So we have this superpower. We have an amazing superpower. You know, you may have never been a cancer survivor turned triathlete or, or lost a limb, you know, and then become an Olympian. Maybe you've never, you know, been a single mother who went on to be a Fortune 500 CEO, but you have a story. You have an amazing story. You have your story. You have a story that people can relate to. You have a story that pe will inspire people. You have a story that will get literally uh, cause people to come up out of poverty or depression. You have a story that can change the world. You have a story that you have to share. And you have a story when you have that kind of a story and you're able to turn it into a how-to, you're able to make a product out of it, then you have a story that you can sell. You have a story that you can use to help people and receive financial, you know, remuneration, I think is the word. As Daniel Lappin says, Rabbi Daniel Lappin, they will give you certificates of, pre of appreciation for helping them with your story. You have that story, and I think that that story is a superpower. I think that story is amazing, whatever it is. So last thing before I get practical, 
with this real quick. And this is what I told Debbie is, you know, my personal belief, and you know, I reserve the right to be wrong about this. You reserve the right to disagree with me is you weren't put here to be average. You weren't put here to just exist. You were put here to change the world. You know, uh, you see me wear, I should have been wearing it now, but you see me wearing you know, a shirt a lot that says, says world changer, just like you. And I, I just don't think that you're put here to be average, to, that you're unnecessary, that you, you know, that the world won't miss you if you're gone. I don't think that's the case. I think the world absolutely needs you. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. So the last piece of practical advice is, you know, maybe your world changing things, you're going to change, you're going to do an invention, or maybe you're going to rescue people from a sinking ship or, or putting out a fire, or you could change the world with your ideas. Because here's the thing, this is what I told Debbie, ideas change the world. They really do. So maybe that's your way to contribute to this, this little round ball floating in the sky here, is that you're going to use your ideas, you're going to use your story, you're going to inspire people, you're also going to share with them how to. Because ideas can and will and do all the time change the world. So yes, you have something to say. Yes, you have a story. And yes, there are products. There are amazing riches wrapped up in your story. So get out there and tell your story. As I'm Matt McWilliams, and if you're watching this anywhere other than mattmcwilliams.com, head on over to mattmcwilliams.com. Got a ton of great resources for you, free, all free, uh, how to get affiliates, how to make money as an affiliate, how to have better marketing, all that stuff, how to build an online business, uh, much of it wrapped around your story, guys. So head on over there, mattmcwilliams.com, and I will see you in the next video.